Let's talk about Stephanie Click. Let me tell you about my personal meeting with her. She wouldn't meet with me in my office. She found what I was trying to do to protect my son very distasteful. And she didn't want me in her office, didn't let me talk to her staff. So she decided to meet me in this little private hallway back near uh, Dave Phelan's offices. And we had a little stand-up meeting there. And she never looked me in the eye. But she told me, she said, my main concern is if we have a hearing on this bill, and remember, all this bill would do would take away liability insurance for doctors who literally cut penises, testicles, and breasts off kids. That's all that bill is going to do. It says you don't get liability insurance if you're going to do it. She said, my main concern is that there will be transgender people who will have their feelings hurt. That's literally what she told me. That's literally what she told me. And I said, ma'am, my son is under dire threat right now in a Dallas County court. They have every intention when he turns nine years old. It's in his medical records. They want to chemically castrate him and put him on cross-sex hormones, which will sterilize him, and he'll have micro penis, a toddler's penis for the rest of his life. And she turned her back on me and walked away. This is not a person who deserves to be in office. Now, what are those kind of character traits that would lead a person to think and do and say things like that? Normal people don't think that way, right? Well, you know, as I thought about it, as I went through this session, just amazed we couldn't get this bill passed. I thought about it, you know? Uh, you probably could blame it on the system. The system is broken. You know, uh, Lou talked about this complex system which lets them hide blocking bills. We have legislators that will introduce conservative legislation and kill it themselves. Come back and tell you that their legislation is conservative. See how conservative I am? And then go to their donors and say, see how liberal I am? I got your bills killed. And then they get money from both of you. They've been doing that for 21 years in this state. Well, you might blame it on the system. Stephanie Click has abused the system. She has abused the system to cooperate with the left to hurt children in this state. You might blame it on Stephanie Click's ambition, maybe. I've thought about that. And she is an ambitious woman. She's willing to compromise her principles to work with a liberal uniparty establishment to her children in order to advance her political career. That's her. And indeed, she, you know, she has advanced her own pecuniary interests at your expense. I'm not blaming it on that. But what she really, it's what it's what I've come to, what she really banks on is that you won't care. That when it comes time to vote, you're going to forget the technical explanation. You're going to forget that here I am pleading for my son's life and she walks away from me. Won't look me in the eye, won't talk to me, won't have a meeting with me. She's banking that in the end, you're not going to care about that. You're going to care about name recognition. You're going to care about how much money she has. And I'm going to tell you, that is the path to having the exact same problems in government that you've been seeing for 21 years that you hate. So what does it take for David Lowe to win? Well, I'm in my own election, so I've learned the hard way. <laughs> It only takes three things. It's like, it's like you know, my old Marine Corps sergeant used to say, tactics are simple. Hit them as hard as you can. Where it hurts the most when they ain't look. Things are simple. But pulling it off's hard, right? What does it take? Well, you gotta outsmart your opponent. David Lowe has the values. He has the intellect. He has the military training. And if you've met uh, Stephanie Click, you know she ain't no brain child. <laughs> I'll just say it. Right? David Lowe's David Lowe has the has the intellectual capacity to destroy her in a debate, and that's why she won't debate it. She will not do it. The second thing you have to do is you have to outwork your opponent. Has this woman worked for your vote? Has she come out and knocked on your door? Is she putting signs out? Is she giving speeches? Is she out in public where she can be questioned? Where her performance can be put on display for the public? She's nowhere to be found. She's not even campaigning. She ain't working. And one thing you've got to say about David Lowe, that man works. 
mean, I'm embarrassed when I look at what I've done on my campaign. <laughs> and the third thing you have to do is you have to spend your money wisely. When David was in the military, he used an M4. I think he was a treadhead, so he might have used something bigger than that. <laughs> I was infantry, so. But you know, he, he, they use weapons. In politics, it's messaging and money. He needs your help. He needs his signs out there. It's expensive. He needs to drop those mailers. Our elderly citizens who vote doggedly and loyally in our Republican primaries, they read those mailers. They're not on the internet. These mailers are really expensive, okay? The other thing is, larger donors, people have lots more money than you and I, look at your five, your 10, your 25, your $50 donation, and that's how they decide how much support this fellow has and whether they're gonna give him $10,000 to pay for those mailings. Your small donations really, really matter. So you gotta outsmart them, outwork them, and you gotta spend your money better than they spend. It's not about having more, it's about using it more effectively. So I'm asking you today, you just put a click on one hand, and David Lowe on the other, and I'm telling you, your money needs to go to David Lowe, your talent needs to go to David Lowe. If you can contribute, help him. Thank you.